Hi, this is Gretchen with Girls Gone Bowling, and we are back here with Gary, and we're going to talk about used balls today. Um, a lot of us have them sitting around in our basement. A good place that you can even donate them are youth leagues. Um, talk to your local bowling alley, and they can be filled and redrilled for somebody else's hand. So where are you going to take us to, Gary? Well, I think the first thing we need to talk about, if you do have a used ball or you pick up a used ball, uh, you talk to the person that gave it to you or that had it. If the ball has a lot of games on it, before I would consider plugging and redrilling it, it needs to be, the oil needs to be extracted out of it. If it's had a lot of games on it and the cover stock is full of oil, then the ball plug will not adhere to the edges of the wall in the hole that you try to fill. Okay. I've had that happen a number of times. So how do it you get? It doesn't always happen. But what we do is we put it in the in the reviver, which is ran by by heat. It rotates the balls all the time, and uh, heat comes out through this. The ball is turned at all time. Uh, I try and take it out and wipe it off every 20, 30 minutes, you know, to to make sure that the oil does get off of it. We do have pads in there that will draw some of it off, but as the pads fill up, then. You don't get so it. So essentially, we're baking it to yes, pull the oil. Yes, pretty out. much, pretty much. And there's there's like two or three different types of thing to do that, but this is the one that I have. I guess the second thing I would do too is if the ball has had a lot of games on it, look at it to see what kind of what kind of looks like on the surface. You know, this this here is a used ball that Danny Gordon bought in from brought in for me to work on. Okay, okay. I do have the thumb hole and the fingers plugged. I'm gonna drill it for him uh, Saturday. Uh, this ball has been taken well care of, so you know. Uh, yeah, baked it a little bit, but as far as resurfacing the surface, it really doesn't need it. You will find some that do. Uh, if they've got a lot of nicks and scratches in them, then I would suggest resurfacing it and get it back to the original original cover stock. Uh, that's going to make the ball work more like you that you think it will, because when you look at a ball, oh, I like that ball because it's not because it's color, it's because of what the ball is going to do for you. That's how I used to look at a ball. I know, I know. Women are different than men. They like colors, you know, which does, is fine. Does a ball have a lifespan? <laughs> they do to a point. Uh, I always tell everybody when they come in and buy a new ball, how do I take care of it? I say, clean it every time when you're done bowling. Just go up, set it on the table, clean it. Uh, we've got spray cleaner or whatever, you know, spray it on, wipe it off really good. Mm -hmm. After you get a hundred games in it, then you need to bring it in and have us look at it and see if we need to bake it or however you do it. There's, two, like I said, two or three different places, ways to do that and get the oil extracted out of it and then trying to kind of take it back to original surface a little bit. But it's taking care of a ball is it's just a little bit of work, but it, it does make the ball last longer. Well, and like but, most but, things, if you do upkeep on it, right. it's cheaper in the long run exactly. than having to get a new ball each exactly. time. And as far as the ball wearing out, they will eventually, but you're going to have to put three or four or five or six hundred games on it, you know, and maybe have it baked or resurfaced two or three different times, you know, then the cover stock does kind of go away. But normally they'll last a long time, you know. General idea of what it's going to cost. We charge here $15 to extract the oil out of it. I don't know what anybody else charges, you know, because I don't try to keep up on that. That's no. none of my business. But uh, if I resurface it, that's $25. So you can have it baked and resurfaced for $40, you know, and that's going to make the ball react a lot like it was when it's new. It's never going to be like it was when it's new, but it's mm -hmm. going to react a lot like mm -hmm. it was before. Now, uh, what what is resurfacing? Does your ball still look the same and it's just more like a clear coat? No. On well, top? What, what I do is I'll take it, I'll put it over here in the spinner, in the ball spinner, okay? And I have different numbers of sandpaper that I use. Uh, normally I'll start with a 60 grit dry and sand it down fairly well uh, and then I'll graduate up to 220, 320, 400 and then I do the 3M pads which is a red one and then a gray one and if it's a polished Hello. surface then we polish it. So that's so, uh, so it's like sanding a floor you're just taking a yeah, little bit right. of surface yeah, you're, yeah you're taking all the excess stuff off the outside that you don't want and trying to get rid of it. So So today uh, today we're looking at this reality today, which yes, came to, from one of my guys. Yes. Uh, and we're going to have it redrilled for me. Right. Uh, stronger ball than you have right now. Mm -hmm. And heavier. And heavier, which is which is going to be good for you, I think. Uh, 
Uh, I've already had the fingers. We did not plug the fingers because the way it was drilled, we thought would work fairly well for you. Mm -hmm. So all I did was plug the thumb. Uh, I am. We have new fingers here to put in. Uh, I get those in. I'll make sure. Have you check them and make sure they're right for you. Go ahead and put your fingers in there, Gretchen. See if those are going to be. So okay. I like plugs in a lot better than just having the holes. You want the okay fit? Yeah. You're talking about the power tips, or just having a plug in versus oh. the raw hole. Oh well, yes, definitely. Uh, but there are some people that like naked fingers, and some people like naked thumbs. You know, they now those look a little large to me. That's what I do have on your drill sheet, but those look a little large. Let's go down. Let's go down a size or two on on both of them. See what those feel like to you. Those look better to me. Especially they definitely that one. feel tighter. Yeah, yeah, but they're not too tight that you don't, you know, that you can't get your fingers mm -hmm. into the to the first mm -hmm. joint. So, okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have our span distance right. And this is full length span, so we're doing four and a sixteenth. Well, this is where our thumb's going to be, all right? This mm -hmm. is going to be our center. And we're going to put a switch grip, or not a switch grip, but a regular thumb slug in mm -hmm. because we're going to be drilling in partially in the plug and partially in the ball. Mm -hmm. So if we don't put a thumb slug in, you're going to get a lot of different feels mm -hmm. as you put the thing in the hole, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see what that thumb feels like to you. Okay. A little tight. It is a little tight. Mm -hmm. Keep your knuckle nice and straight. Right on the sides. Okay, let's mark a spot right there. Oh, yeah, because like this, it's really okay. bad. <laughs> all right, that's all right. Just let me have it, okay? Uh huh. in demand today. I know. Sometimes, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. But that's one thing on a movie set that never happens, does it? They don't ever get interrupted by a phone call. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they do all the time. They just don't show it. Well, that could be. All right, let's try again. Okay. That's oh, better. that's a lot better. Mm -hmm. I think that's good enough, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me move the grips in. So it's not far off from the old? Not really. It's a little shorter, yeah, and, and your measurements on your fingers are a little different than your son's. So you're mentioning cleaning the ball, maintenance on the ball, how it yes. lasts longer. Yes. You have the spray. 
We do. Over there? Yep. We have we have tack up. Uh, I used to carry uh, the Kegel stuff, but we don't anymore. Uh, but the tack up is really good. The Kegel Revive is also really good. And you just spray that on, wipe it spray off. Spray that on, wipe it down really towel. good till it's till it's dry. Okay. Out with a towel, and normally that is going to take the oil out of the very top surface of the ball. You know, after you're done bowling. Okay. And that's a good idea because the longer it sets, the more it's going to soak in. So. And while you're bowling, I see a lot of people use chamois and so forth. Can you tell me the difference between they do leather, not leather, towel? I I don't use a chamois myself, so. The chamois do absorb oil more uh, out of the ball. I just use a dry towel myself. I've always done that, so I, that's, I just never got over it, you know. But we do sell a lot of chamois. Uh, a lot of people like the leather chamois. They think, and, and I agree with it, it has a little more surface to it than, than the smooth side. So it will try to keep the surface a little bit cleaner and a little bit better, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much. I Like I said, I don't use a chamois. but. Everybody that uses a chamois, like them, you know. Uh, you got some shoes with you? Let's go try them I off. have shoes. Okay. Let's go try it. Very careful. First time or two, make sure the thumb's going to be out. Come out. Okay, all right. <laughs> Right there. I can definitely tell it's heavier. But it comes off your hand, but don't you think it's easier for you to actually throw the ball? I it mean, wasn't bad. With no much effort? I was I was nervous of the thumb bowl because I've had it well, stick I think before. You didn't have your thumb quite all the way so, Well that's how I started throwing my other one. Let's, I don't let's, have my thumb all the way in. Put your thumb all the way in this